Today I am in Dublin, the capital of the Republic of Ireland and behind me here you'll be able to see a really quite fancy Three Island site which is one of their brand new Ericsson sites with flagship 4G connectivity as well as 5G. This site is ATAR 5G and the remote radios are visible behind the antenna units. The rest of the remote radios are unfortunately not visible from this angle. 4G performance of this site, despite the limitations of the device I was testing, were absolutely astounding, especially considering as well that I was roaming at the time. The site is Quad LTE carrier, however you can only see three of the carriers in the screenshot. So it has 20 megahertz of 800 megahertz band 20 with 2x2 two two, and then all of the high bands are 4x4. Four four. We've got band 1 L21 at 15 megahertz and then two band 3 carriers, one at 20 megahertz and one at 15 megahertz. So all in all that's quite a lot of spectrum, so 50 megahertz, 4x4 four four, and 60 megahertz total and that explains how despite being so urban it offers quite so nice numbers but you ain't seen nothing yet on this gray nondescript looking tower block behind me is the very flagship of three island ericsson complete with massive mimo 5g using ericsson airs as well as the top of the line 4g configuration adding band 28 on top of the configuration that we saw earlier in addition this site has visible remote radios from Ericsson as well as Nokia just to add that little bit on top of the cake that just really makes it a fantastic site. For those wondering about the technical details of this site and the spectrum involved, here goes. So the 5G active antennas are Ericsson Air 3239s which are 32T32R. Three Islands have 100 megahertz of M78 spectrum nationally across Ireland, which they will hopefully be launching commercial 5G with soon enough. Then the rest of the equipment on the site is for 2G, 3G and 4G. The passive antennas are Huawei 12 port, of which eight of the ports are in use from the remote radios below. The grey radios are Nokia FXDBs, which will be doing UMTS 900 MHz. Maybe I suppose GSM 900 MHz, but I'm not too sure about 2G on these sites. Um, and then the other remote radios, the white ones, are Ericsson. The thicker and shorter remote radios are Ericsson ERS 2238, which are triple band for 700, 800, 900 megahertz, and therefore LT700, LT800, and then possibly GSM 900 megahertz, or likely GSM 900 megahertz, dependent on what the FXDBs are carrying. The taller and thinner remote radios are 44R dual band 1800 and 2100 megahertz, which means 44R M18 across those two 1800 megahertz carriers, as well as 44R 2100 MHz on the same radio. Three Islands HQ has this absolutely extreme rooftop site on it, which is also shared with another mobile operator. But as far as I can tell, Three's equipment is located on the upper stack and features once again a high-end remote radio capability with I think 4443's 444R L18 plus L21 capability alongside ERS 2238's and some other Nokia radios there. But the interesting part of this is that it has Ericsson Air 6488 which are 6040, 64R 5G active antenna units which is the higher level of massive MIMO above the 32T32R we saw earlier. Now this site is so extreme I think I'm going to have to do another video of it all because I don't think I've seen a site like it before 
at least not in sort of this part of the world. The LTE 700MHz and 2100MHz shown in this video are operating using temporary licenses of regulator Comreg. The reason for this is that 700MHz has not been auctioned off yet in the Republic of Ireland and ordinarily 2100MHz was still subject to 3G only license terms. While the multi-band spectrum auction is upcoming due to the pandemic and increased demand on mobile network operators, Comreg made the very sensible decision to make this spectrum usage available to operators to help assist their customers communicate sustainably. Interestingly as well, I would say, while in the Republic of Ireland, Operator 3 performed really very well. I was rather expecting their performance to generally be quite satisfactory because they have a fairly significant chunk of spectrum, as well as a nice penetration of 4G deployment across their site portfolio. However, I was still left very impressed by their performance. And on that note, thanks for watching and I hope to see you on the next video.